Thank you so much, choir. We go back to that one verse that we read in uh, John's Gospel, chapter 21, and the 22nd verse. If I want him to live until I return, what is that to you? Thank you all for coming. It's summer. Thank you. in church. Congratulations. I thought you'd be holidaying somewhere. This is a good place to holiday, isn't it? To come and say, God, what have you to say to me? So well done in availing yourself to the house of worship. And this day, the Hasbro United Baptist Church, we appreciate your coming and involve God's blessing upon you as you meet with us. Let's take a little look at that word. If we examine ourselves very carefully, we shall find that each one of us will take note of something that drives us. Mothers, think about what happens when your child cries. <laughs> you cry along with it. I know it's some, somewhat strange, you know, the differences in culture. In, in here, when you begin to bring up your babies, you can let your two-month-old or three-month-old what we any old baby sleep in its own room. In Africa, you dare not do that. The baby must be by your side. But let's face it: if your child is in the next room and it <gasps> cries, you won't say, "Let it cry." Some mothers are dying, though. But no, really, deep down your heart, you want to be there. What's making it cry? You don't want it to be uncomfortable. You want it to sleep calmly, nicely. Those of you who love lovers, call it your wife. Think of how distance and expenditure are not an issue. Because you want to be with them. They may be in Africa, you will travel to Africa to see them. Or they may be in Asia, or in troubled Turkey, or whichever place you still want to go and see them. Stock up enough resources and just make certain you are there. Aren't there people like that, who without our realizing it, just cause us to dance the very moment we hear their voices, we hear anything about them. It's an attachment that we have with them. But besides that, there are also those instances when like ordinary human beings, something happens which is unpleasant and not exactly wanting our consciences to be pricked we begin to find excuses, like the friend about whom we've written in Genesis 4, who murders, and then says to his wives, well, uh, listen to me, my dear women, I have just killed a man for wounding me, a man for hurting me, but if God protected Cain, the first murderer, uh, then you should, shouldn't see much more be understanding when a man like me should make some mistake. Haven't we all lived like that? We have looked at other people and we have seen the way they have carried themselves about and we have drawn similarities between them and ourselves and actually we have felt, well, if they can go on like that, why can't I also carry on the way I am? If it is all right with them, why shouldn't it be so with me? And we've gone on because we feel, after all, we are either like or even better than those there. And this is exactly what the text before us is telling us is a bad and not good way of living. And that is why in speaking to Peter, the Lord Jesus begins by telling him in the verse that we've just read, not to concern himself about others. Let others 
ran their own light. Notice how the Lord puts it. If I want him to live until I return, what is that to you? Now to understand that, let's look at the question that arises here. Because Peter asks the Lord, what about this man? <laughs> you see, Peter sees the other man and he actually shares in the other man's experiences. And there is a sense in which actually socks himself into it. Because you see, the text says he recollects that this was the John who was leaning on Jesus' breast and who on the last supper, at the time of the last supper, did ask who is going to betray him. Perhaps Peter is thinking there may be a favoritism here. It may be better for this guy than for me, but Lord, what, why the distinction? So what about this man? And it's not uncommon for us to share, to sympathize, or empathize, whatever might be the case, in other people's situations. And the Lord is saying, as you do that, just be careful that you're being sucked into it does not check who you are. For that is a mistake we more often than not make. Because see, when that question about empathizing or sympathizing with others arises, more questions come. So there's the qualm, this, the more questions. And here's what happens. What about this man? And then the Lord says, if I want, is he your business? No, he's my business. And what I care for and concern myself with regarding this man, that is not your business. It's between that man and me. So why are you bothering? It is nice to sympathize, to see uh, the situation others are going in and feel kind for them. Or even empathize, feel with them. Almost feel what they are feeling. But like doctors or counselors, it is important while you come alongside others not to be the situation they are in. Because if you yourself become sick, then who is going to help the other? Because one of you must be of help to the other. And that is why the doctor must understand that situation and not be the situation himself or the counselor. Otherwise, now to be chaotic because both will be needing help. And this is what the text is telling us. When we see what's going on in other people's lives, all right, let's feel with them, but let's not be them. Here's a journalist who has gone out and is now amongst his fellow journalists reporting what has taken place. And the story is told a very chaotic situation somewhere. And they say, you're going there. He says, no, no, I'm not going there. I say, why not? We must get the news. He says, my fear is if I go there, I will be the news. I don't want to be the news. I want to get the news. I don't know if you get the sense of that. You see, when situations are going on in other people's lives, you may want to understand them, and that's a good thing to do. But don't let them shape you. And sadly, more often than not, we do just that. Well, I had children, and I surely as they show a concern, and I have loves, and I sure they have cares, and I have friends, and as soon as something happens to them, something happens to me, and I understand that. I'm as human as you, and I get as moved as anybody else can get gets moved. Who of us can think of that story of Talia and her mother who've just been murdered, and begin to say, ah, they're just people. They are not just people. It's something that affects all of us. A 34-year young woman with a five-year-old daughter, both 
think we do know the motive behind that. <coughs> but you can imagine if the people that are looking for the situation become like dead themselves. They will not find the killer, they will not prosecute him, and so on, but they must know this is a bad situation. And then, okay, now how do we now redeem this situation so that it either does not repeat itself or we don't have things like that taking place? That's what you're looking for. And I want to ask, in your commitment to God, in your presence in this church, in your availability to this community, how many people influence your life? How many people's lives are you living instead of living your own life? Who are you looking at? And who is that one who is actually going so much into you? Whether or not good or bad, human beings have about them something very deceptive. That person who on the outside looks like they are not committed and you excuse yourself and say, if they can be like that, I will get away with it. You may just be surprised at how much they do in the secret. You know those instances when young people are in school and suddenly one is just playing around and the, 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 the foolish one also follows around when they come to write exams, this fellow fails and he says, but that one was playing with me, how come he has passed and I failed? While you are playing together, and he spent deep in the night, went deep in the night studying and you foolishly just played along with him. But that one, we studied together, but how come he has failed? Oh, while well, you thought he was studying, he was actually playing games. You know how many, how many times you know, some of our young people come with us here, and they are seated amongst us here, and sometimes I've spoken to certain of them, you know, because when they are seated here, there are those things in their ears. They are not listening to what's going on, they are listening to what's, you know. And so they were in church, and that's why you ask them, what went on? Nothing, because they were listening to something else, other what was going on here. And so those seemingly present and doing certain things, oh, they look like serious, but deep inside they are not. And so let's look and let's learn how to test every situation so that if we're going to be attracted by anything or dispelled by anything, discarded by anything, it will be, it will be by the word of God. If it's something bad, we will learn from it. If it's something good, then we'll be get, get, get carried along with it. You know, when uh, our boys were in grades about 10 to, you know, know, 7, 6, somewhere there, we brought in a young man who was like a teacher around and said, boy, can you school our children? We want them to be tutored so that they do well. And then uh, too soon the boys came back and said, daddy, mother, no, we don't want that children to teach us. And say, why? He's not teaching us anything that we don't know. And I said, mm, boys, he's a teacher. And say, yeah, no, yeah, it's true, Daddy. We just we know everything. And in fact, he's doing certain things wrong. You know, he's supposed to have taught us this way, he taught us like that. And so he told me, no, no, this is not right. So he said, the good thing about that is this, that he's able to help you see how wrong he is. Then you'll do what is right. So continue with him, boys. When they went to high school, they had such good teachers, and, and the boys were just eager to go and say, can you take me in the middle of the night to my lecture? Teacher, that you may help me in this, tutor. You see, any situation that you are faced with, depending upon the angle from which you look at it, will be of benefit to you if you see it from the viewpoint of God. And that's what God wants us to see. Let others live their lives but you live the life that I want you to live. And that's our, our second thought. Jesus says, okay, you concentrate on me. And that's our last thought. Because this one says, you, you follow me. Notice how personal it is. It says, all right, you're talking about that guy, forget it. You follow me. Who are you following as you sit here? What was inspiration about your coming here? What is the reason you are seated here? You, not that person. Don't say, okay, because this one is here, I'm also here. That one, you, why are you here? Jesus is telling Peter, you, make it very personal, you. And not just make it personal, make it 
a profound experience. It says follow. To follow is to go behind, to tag on, to keep in the footsteps of, and enjoy the example and imitate the example of. To be led by. See, it says you follow. And don't just follow. Partner with me. Look at, look at the fellowship. It says, follow me. Don't look at others. Don't look at just things. Look at a person and get engrossed in this person. You follow me. Now I love that. And so see how engrossing the whole thing is. You follow me. Who are you following? Let me ask you again as you sit here. Peter must follow Jesus. And what is the basis of his following? He is the one, John chapter 6, who, when everybody else runs away from Jesus, says, to whom shall we go? And the Lord says, will you also go? He says, to whom shall we go? You alone. See the relationship? You alone. And see not only this beauty of attraction, see the blessedness of it all. Who is this you? It is the one about whom we read in Genesis chapter 15, 1, saying to Abraham, I am your shield, your exceeding great reward. What reward can be better than God? What do you have when you don't have God? Nothing. What don't you have when you have God? Nothing. In other words, only when you have God do you have everything. Here you are. But without God, nothing. And he says, this is your exceeding great reward. The basis is God loves and he gives his son. He gives his son that we might live for ourselves no more, but for him, not, not, not for laws, not for activities, but for the person, for him. Just as God calls Peter, you, Peter. And, and, and so Peter, he has Peter, I love you. Peter, I love you. You, I love you. It comes to hit him personally. So he also goes and says, you, Lord, you, you will I follow. Has that experience been yours? You see, this is a divide between a non-Christian's life and a Christian's life. The non-Christian follows this commandment, this law, this rule, this activity. We follow this person, this being, this God, this Lord. He is the basis. And he's a blessing we want. But it's not just that. Look, look, look at how bright the whole thing is. This Jesus not only gives us some things, he gives us all things. And when we read Revelation 21 and 22, there are seven pictures, a sevenfold picture of Jesus Christ marrying his bride called the church. In the deepest and richest sense of the word, what relationship can be any better than the relationship between husband and wife? None at all. And when God should marry his creation, he is saying, this is my favorite creation, humanity. And that's brilliant. But notice its glory. Revelation 1 and 22 tells us it's going to last forever. And it comes splendid for us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 25. This is what he has promised us, eternal life. Haven't some men died when their spouses have died? Haven't some women died when their husbands have died? Haven't we ourselves died, in a sense, when some relationships have been taken away from us? Hasn't that, hasn't that happened? But he is one who tells us we'll have a relationship with him that will never end. With all good things, not some, all good things. He who has given us his own son, will you not along with him give us all good things? Not 10 years, not 15 years, not a million years. For endless ages. Can anything be better than who do you want to follow? I pray this very day you will follow Jesus. How can you do that? Say to him, here am I. Have me. Just that is far more interested in the attitude of your heart than he is the words of your mouth. Write to him, and you'll be able to tell.
what will happen between himself and you. He's alive. Try it. Father, we thank you for this hour in which you allowed us to meet, that we might speak about this gorgeous person of Jesus and how he has loved us beyond description. May there be amongst us not one of us who rejects the offer of his love, but may we all humbly come. And so we pray that you, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just before we close, I want to ask you this question. What are those interests that carry you away and take you away from Jesus? How many of us in this day, if I were someone just about to start off to this place, suddenly hear a knock, and that best friend who you hadn't seen for the past 15 years just knocks on your door. When he's, hi, James! Church, by the side, James, come in. How many of us will do that? Or somebody else comes, Let's go fishing. Think about those moments when God is inviting you to meet with him here in a Bible study, in a prayer meeting, in a morning worship, and then something comes and takes your attention. Who are you serving with? Think of your personal interests, those interests that conflict with what God wants. How many times have you gone by those instead of going by what God wants? Yeah. Ask yourself those questions. If you're following Jesus, and follow Jesus is not part of you, with all of you. Well, we invite the ashes to lead us in the next day.